analyze cards a lot. That's what Jake and I do. As new cards come out, we analyze them. What formats are they going to? What's going to be the financial impact of this card? That's a big kind of angle that we come from. And occasionally, one of us will go, wow, man, this looks like a CDH card. <laughs> oh, bro. Flamed constantly. Yes. What the hell are y'all talking about, you morons? It's got to be something more than just uh, a good converted mana cost. <laughs> yeah. So that's why uh, one mana spells are aren't automatically yeah. CDH cards, guys. Anyway, so what we want to <laughs> know is going into a new set, how do you look for and find CEDH playables or CEDH maybes? You know what I'm saying? How can we how can we get better yeah. at that? Huge Man, question. If I if I only knew, I'd be much better at our podcasting portion of the job because I feel like we we have a, we have reviews where we talk about the sets a lot of times and normally we get them like for the most part, but there's definitely some that we miss. Um, I have some stuff in mind, Cam. I don't know. What do you, when first comes to mind, what are you looking for? Uh, I, I'm looking for two things. Number one, I'm looking to see if a card does something similar to something else that's already good in CEDH. Okay. That's a big one that I know Dylan also will look for too. Um, this is stuff like bounce spells, other like efficient removal or um, like weird effects on enchantments that are only on like one other creature that have weird interactions that like gains tons of card advantage or Do something like that. Do you have like an example? That. It so sounds like you're talking about a specific card. Um, yeah, let's take like Trouble in Paris, for example, right? That card yeah. has a ton of text on it that is shown up on a lot of other cards, um, like Crown, specifically Ludwig's Opus, which is it's, a... <laughs> it's Trouble in Pairs, not... Oh, Cam, I think I said Paris, and I also say Trouble in Pairs, Chad, but hang on it's just a second. Pairs. Let me show you, bro. <laughs> I hadn't even trouble swapped the scenes yet, chat, and I'm over here. He yeah. said Trouble in Paris, and I'm like, I haven't heard of that one. It must it's be some Paris, Doctor yeah. Who card i haven't heard of <laughs> trouble in paris that makes sense for doctor who <laughs> yeah anyway right. trouble in pairs got it yeah trouble in pairs, got all the right? letters like, correct yeah. in that word yes yeah <laughs> that's all that matters right i got the letters right yeah <laughs> right um but yeah. yeah this card for example this has a lot of good car good sentences that i want to see like whenever my opponent does something there's no other investment for me outside of just casting the spell and yeah. it says you draw a card so anytime something says that i get to draw a card for free i'm gonna look at that that's something i'm looking at um, the the last thing that I usually will look for are effects that will work very well with commanders that I know are already going to be good in CEDH. That can be something as complicated as a super nutty combo piece that will now unlock a new commander in the format. Or that could be something as uh, simple as... Um, oh man, I just had a really good example in my head and I totally lost it trying to think of that last example. Oh yeah, something as easy as just like an evasive creature for Timna to attack and draw a card, right? Yeah. Um, so th there's a wide range of things that you're looking for when it comes to like commander specific cards for CE. But you're talking, you're talking mostly, um, my takeaway here is that redundancy is such a big deal that you're trying to find more of those effects that are gonna accomplish the the same goal, right? Is like you're you're trying to refine that opening seven as much as you can, and and kind of get all the pieces in there to make it happen. Well, I yeah, have to play ninety nine cards, and I can't repeat any of them. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so we're looking. I, not for... all of them are good. <laughs> That's right. the biggest I thing. I think since we're in a singleton format, anything that improves consistency at a really low mana rate is going to be really powerful. So anything that's going to help you draw more cards, specifically like engine type things like Rhystic Studies, that whenever an opponent does something, you gain an effect without having to initiate more, not, without having to put more stuff into it. Like you just pay the one cost for Rhystic Study, and every time your opponent does a thing, you're going to get that back. Obviously, I don't need to explain why Rhystic Studies is good. Sure, we, sure. we can randomize, we know, but yeah. anything that looks like that. So stuff like Lotho and stuff that, that anytime your opponent does a thing, if that's like three mana or less, or sometimes even four mana with the trouble in pairs that's probably going to be a cdh card if it's like a three mana permanent that says whenever an opponent does something gain draw a card or make a treasure that card's probably good yeah now, okay now so I in contrast say, though, let's look at a card like this so you're yeah. you should be getting i know it's four mana so it's kind of automatically like man who cares but you, this under that same kind of thought should be a playable card in that format is it all the mana cost on something like this so I know I can uh, tell you why. Oh, King Cameron can go if he knows. 
I, uh, it's not all the mana cost because we'll, after this, we should look up a card called Talion the Kindly Lord and we'll see that it's not oh, the yeah. mana cost. Yeah. Um, and it's more about the specific advantage that you're getting okay. uh, and the value that you can get off of it. Like getting a basic planes is not going to help me out in a game of CEDH whatsoever. Um, also, it, it comes in tap the first one right away, so you can't access it soon enough. Mm. Also sad. Um, and there's not really a bad. lot of decks that are going to be able to utilize or it, maybe not utilize, but maybe find value in creating a 1-1 one, one soldier sometimes when they could be doing far more powerful things. Got it. Yeah, it's like, it's important, I think, remember for CDH, it's a combo format. So like the life total, it does like technically matter, but not nearly in the same way that it does in other formats or even in like regular commander, because you're not going to attack someone, attack the whole table to death. It's just, it very, very rarely it can happen, but most often than not, attacking someone's life is just like attacking their resources. So just, it's a completely different style. So the one ones don't really do quite enough, but yeah, at four mana, something like Talion does the engine thing a little bit better because not only does it dwindle your opponent's life total slightly, but the drawing card is just so important. The, the extra cards are so powerful in CDH. Is this card actually doing things, Talion? Because a lot of people Big right time. when it came out. Yeah, it's moving. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the 99 and as a commander, I think as a commander, it's just a little like color restricted being only two colors in Demir. You like being only two colors, you have to do so much. Um, but in, even in the 99, I think this card is great as just like a, another Ristic study that can be off of creature tutors. Um, yeah, it's, it's that passive effect is just so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So like passive effects, but is. the passive has to be a good effect for the format. Um, just trying it, to it understand. It basically has to be like, yeah, draw a card basically is what it has to be. Like Lotho yeah. is an exception because Lotho, you can trigger it yourself and then you can make a treasure right away. So like, that's a good example of like, it doesn't actually draw you a card, but it's still like an engine that gains you a resource that you can use immediately. Uh, and it's like quite good, but it has to gain you something like, like right away a lot of the time academy man i would say that the two most important <laughs> yeah i would say yeah. the two most important kinds of advantage that you want to get in cedh are card advantage and mana advantage so even something like like smothering tithe is even still like a sometimes kind of card like it is still very powerful and it is going to do a lot but this even this is like on the brink in some decks i think it's been coming back recently cdh's metagame has been shifting to be a lot more mid-rangey and more and in mm -hmm. like mid-rangey grindy Ristic study worlds where the, everyone has Italian or a Ristic study or a Mystical Bar or an Esper Sentinel, at some point in the game, Smothering Tithe gets like pretty crazy. When new cards are getting previewed, this was a question from one of our patrons. Behe asked, is there any bias toward certain colors that you think are gonna be, oh, that's where the CEDH colors are gonna be. And then cards that are like mono or two color cards, three colors plus, do you find that more often than not, let's say your standard sets like Murder, Murders at Karlov or LCI before that, um, were, are there more CDH playable cards in certain colors, mono color, dual color, that kind of stuff? Cam, what do you think? Um, I think it's hard to say. I don't really think there's much of a bias. I think the only bias I guess I would have is that I would prefer the good cards to be monocolor so that I can potentially be spending less mana on them. Like a three color card is naturally going to cost three mana a lot of the time, sure. which is going to naturally make that less efficient than a lot of other options. Um, mm -hmm. So unless it's like a charm where I can get a lot of good value out of it, I don't know. I don't know how much I'd, I'd want that over something that's just monocolor. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think there's really any other kind of bias, though. I would also say blue and black are, are the strongest colors in CDH, I think, by a, a good chunk. There is are that certain, pretty agreed upon, or is that just your opinion? I think opinion? so. Yeah, I think that's pretty agreed upon. so stupid, dude. Yeah, yeah specifically for a single tin competitive, like right. Demonic Tutor is just insane. Yeah. Just being able to like find exactly what you need and counter spells okay. are just also really, really good because counter spells can stop your opponents and they can also protect yourself. They're just, so blue and black is really, and something that blue does really well is like bounce permanence at like around two mana, which is just an effect that is normally just playable in CDH and things like that. So I think blue and black, I'm more excited to see like good cards in those colors because it'll just go in better decks a lot of times. Not to say that like red and green and white don't offer specific things like they do. Sure. Dockside's broken and so is Unroll Breach, obviously. But like as yeah. a as a color overall, blue and black are just a lot deeper, I think. So there's kind of a bias just what those colors do is just better. 
TDH. Mm -hmm. That does mean, though, that the bar for those colors is much higher than the bar yeah. for the other colors, though. Uh, so, like, I'll get more excited about weaker white spells because, like, oh, hey, white or green are getting, like, this extra tool. Like, a oh, it's like this is quick reflexes. Yeah, this is going to, like, yeah. change exactly the format. Exactly the one but I it's was going to say. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Like it's not going to change the whole format, but it's certainly going to help the creature decks that need this push. Yeah. Whereas like there are a lot of two mana bounce spells that might also draw me a card situationally. But we have snap and we have snap back and we have chain of vapor like my my ceiling is so much higher on that. So yeah, I, maybe you're right. Yeah, maybe it just goes both ways. It's some it kind of depends. Yeah. Can we talk about Nuka Cola vending machine? This is a card that I saw and thought, wow, there's so much going on. And I want to hear from these guys why this card is probably not gonna do not gonna do much <laughs> yeah okay or if you um, think it will uh food tokens aren't good that's what that's what i was okay. afraid of the bat. <laughs> so they're All not right. even so good also, in the, sense. Also yeah. the word the word tap treasure is also disgusting on this card okay. uh, because what i see here is an artifact that makes two more artifacts and then my opponent casts dockside extortionist and i can't do shit about it any of these artifacts <laughs> okay. and then they win the game okay so in Got a casual yeah. setting obviously you can work towards something like rise and shine with all of these there's yeah. no there's no strategies in cedh that are just like tokens tokens come one come all because i know there's at least one deck that's like give me all your bad cards that say put a counter on especially if it's some random counter that's not a common counter like i need that um tigum yeah, tigum i think from what i've read is runs yeah. bad cards specifically to get an effect so is there anything that's just like i love tokens please the only thing that i not really like i guess like magda and tivit both use like some tokens in in some way like that like magda can sacrifice the treasure tokens but it's just and like tivit can like sacrifice the reason i say tivit actually this should be explained is because of time sieve um, because time sieve allows you to sacrifice five artifacts yeah. and Tivit makes like five artifacts so you can take an extra turn yeah um so like that would be the only way the main reason i don't think this card unless i'm missing something you three mana one mana to tap it and create a food and then you spend two more mana to gain the three life and then you make a tap treasure and you can just be doing so much more other stuff with mana i think so just and not mana efficient in the format I just, think not it's, mana. It's not doing enough. Okay. Yeah, because with, with that type of mana, like, so what it does to me is like it's a f mana investment for a food that becomes a treasure. So that's on par with like Smothering Tithe. It's like a four mana investment to get mana back, and Smothering Tithe is like super, super, super better. That's so there's just I don't know if you would want more of this like higher mana version of that effect. Sure. Yeah. Chat, sure. I mean, and the Smothering Tithe at that point, you've made the investment of four. Correct. And, uh, you don't need to do anything else. You it don't need to pay another passively. one mana to create the. Yeah, yeah it just it, it yeah. generates yeah. over time. Chat, that's a really Three good general card analysis note that you should take from what he just said there. Looking at the cost of the card and then the cost of the card's ability and combining those for your comps to see if you're still mana efficient. I see a lot of people not doing that. Oh, this artifacts too but the tap effect is like six to activate. Yes. <laughs> you need to look at that as an eight mana card to get that yeah. effect. Unless you're doing some kind of, you know, eggsy thing where you just want cheap Even if you are doing a bunch of treasures, right. you still don't want to be dumping all of your treasure mana into something that's, you right. know, not no, efficient. I just, I really right. like I'd, that I'd, Yeah, I'd rather cast like a dark ritual with that or a vampire tutor or something like that yeah sure exactly if this so, did the opposite if you could tap it to make a treasure token whenever you sacked a treasure token you made a food like that would be pretty nut nutty that would be uh, closer yeah. to good but that's yeah. because that just would give you like infinitely less hoops to jump through to make it good i think yeah right. yeah so you see my my commander brain is this makes treasure treasure good in yeah. CEDH. <laughs> That's no, true. You're, I, I'm, you're I'm not right going to lie. Treasure is another one of those words like draw a card that we look at now and go, oh, it says treasure. Right. I need to look at this a little bit harder. Oh, but yeah. there's all, also some cards that will say draw a card that just because it says it on there doesn't necessarily mean I need that. So I still like I still need to consider the, the mana ratio to it as well. Yeah, that's fair. My, my takeaway is if we're analyzing things that are making artifact tokens that the main way i'm hearing it can win is if you're sacrificing treasures to magda's ability or if you're looping time sieve to get infinite turns if it can efficiently contribute to that 
then maybe we have something on our hands or it's going to need to it's going to need to be good enough or have a commander that's new to like create an entire deck or an entire new way of winning right yeah it, it's hard to say because like with those commanders like uh, oftentimes tivit doesn't need anything else besides just the tivit so it doesn't look for mm. like other ways to make the tokens although i have seen some tivit lists that are run like academy manufacturer to like make tivit like even more insane so that oh, is that something card. i you suppose that's jake's pet yeah. card right now you said it you're gonna get him well, started you could have expected that card to be such a powerhouse when they, at the time they yeah no clue, one yeah food and treasure oh. support that it's like if you're not it does it, how about that card that's a card that's kind of a meme on our channel we talk about yes. manufacture a lot yeah is it worth it to even jam it in there if you're if you're grabbing something like dockside I, think I would say it, right? I would say no. I would say okay. no because I because normally okay. cards that are there just to make one other card better, like I, it, yeah. it requires you to have this in play first and then dockside. And even then, making clues and food is not as good. If I was making clues and food to make treasure, I'd be a little bit more interested in that. But we were talking a little bit before the stream started about how you're getting interested in Magda, and this is like a beautiful Magda card. This is right. actually. This is right. actually part of the Magna Infinite Loops as you are using Clock of Omens and your Artifact Dwarf to make infinite tap treasures. You're making infinite untap clues and foods, which you can use to then untap your treasures and now make infinite untap treasures as you go through. <laughs> so there is a Magna home. Loop. <laughs> There There's is a, a home, home for it. it. There's okay, one there deck. is a There's home. Like when it's your chosen deck, deck, it's perfect. It's the yeah. one that I'm I'm kind of building. I mean, I when you, you you type in, you know, Magda CEDH, you're one of the first channels that come up and you also nice. because of the podcast, you have multiple videos on yeah. it too where you're yeah. talking about the deck and Cam, so this is this is your deck that you have, right? This was I went kind of ham your baby. on this deck for a little while. Okay, yeah. Cool. I I love Wait. Magda. Yeah. All so right, the, and then that would be considered to be uh, uh sans everything but red Got it. yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> <Not a red. laughs> yeah sans white blue black and green 